hi uh, everyone from Hope. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ruth and I'm part of the Chislehurst congregation. Uh, this morning we're looking at uh, Genesis uh, 30 starting from verse 25. Um, I think it's fair to say that most of us when we read Genesis find all sorts of stories that we find slightly strange and uh, can struggle to, to work out what it is that God's trying to say to us today through these passages. So yesterday we, we uh, would have looked at the uh, uses of a, a mandrake to help with infertility. Uh, and today at the beginning of the passage we see Laban uh, using divination to, to, to try and find out uh, the secrets to Jacob's success. Um, we find both of these fairly weird uh, and divination is, is certainly condemned elsewhere in scripture. Um, we have to remember that Genesis was written for uh, Hebrews uh, and at the time they would have been very influenced by Egyptian uh, uh, society and, um, and their loving for things that are um, superstitious. Uh, so what, what, what's God trying to say to us now? We can't, we can't shrug this off. There, there are lessons for us to learn. Uh, I think we've all noticed that during the pandemic and during lockdown, um, conspiracy theories have flourished. Uh, people's uh, minds have been taken over by fears and uh, it's led to people believing and accepting as truth all sorts of falsehoods. Um, including uh, a tide of denial about whether COVID even exists, uh, joining anti-vaccination calls, and basically choosing to listen to ex uh, non-experts rather than hearing the truth. Um, and uh, I, I believe it's important that we all recognise that God does not want us to add to the gospel. He doesn't want us to be making up uh, truths to add to, to, to his truth. But this chapter goes on uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we read a description of a negotiation between Jacob and Na uh, Nabum. Uh, and they agree on how Jacob should be paid uh, in order to persuade him to stay working for Na uh, Nabum. Um, and immediately Nabum tries to pull a fast one. Uh, and... Um, uh, what interests me, of course, is that what Nabon does shows that he has observed what we now recognise as uh, genetics. And he can see that uh, flocks and sheep, sheep uh, tend to have their features determined by their parents. Um, so he was basically... Uh, showing uh, uh, an underlying understanding of science when he uh, chose to remove all, all the flocks that showed any difference, for example, uh, uh, having dark marks on them. Um, so J Jacob's response was actually, from a scientific point of view, laughable. Um, but it worked. Uh, and then we, we go on and, and, and see in the next chapter that Nabon's deceptions uh, increased and continued. Um, and uh, in verse 9, um, Jacob clearly says, So God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. So Jacob makes it very clear that it's all about God and, and the outcome of what's happened uh, it is because God has intervened. Uh, so on the one hand, we need to avoid uh, superstition. We need to not be picking up on other people's uh, fear and conspiracies. But we also uh, need to acknowledge that God is bigger than the rules of science. Um, uh, as many of you know, um, I, I'm a doctor and... Um, Obviously, my working life has been very much about genetics and uh, disease and science. And um, about 12, 13 years ago, I found out I have uh, a genetic eye condition. Um, I had visual disturbance. I saw a consultant and 
uh, I was told that I better start learning to touch type pronto um, because once I turned 50, I, I was going to have significant problems. Uh, a couple of years later, I was on holiday and I lost my central vision. Um, I couldn't even read uh, a letter that was uh, maximally magnified on Kindle. And uh, obviously, <laughs> that was quite scary. Uh, and uh, I sent out a request to, to prayer, uh, for, for prayer. Um, and things definitely improved, but when I came back to work, I still really couldn't function properly. Uh, and I was prayed for uh, at church, and things got hugely better. And, uh, um, and I was managing at work for about three months. And, uh, and I read the story of Jesus healing a, a blind man, uh, and he actually had to go back a second time. Uh, to touch his eyes again. So uh, I went back and asked for prayer again for my vision and got hugely better. Uh, so a few months later, I went and had my eyes checked uh, and the optician was a little bit surprised and said, actually, your vision is better than it was three years ago. Um, so I have no doubt that my genetics is just the same as, as it always has been. Uh, but I also have absolute confidence that God has been holding back on, on the uh, unwanted uh, implications of, 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 of my genes. Um, and in the same way that uh, these sheep uh, didn't, didn't quite kind of look like they obeyed the rules of uh, genetics, then I, I would testify that the same thing has happened in, in my life. Um, so... Just in, in summary, I think it's, it, it's important that we um, just reflect on, on, on perhaps different kind of superstitions or uh, that we have unconsciously picked up from those around us and, and, and to um, put them aside and, and put our faith and trust in God, but e equally to make sure that we don't allow science to become a God uh, and that we uh, remember to focus our eyes on, on, on the one true God who, who has authority in every single area of our lives, in, including uh, how our genes express themselves. Thank you.